To the left of me here, we have two brand new coolers from Corsair, one being the H115i Pro, and that is kind of like the big brother to the H110, which is already the big brother to the H100. And then we've got after that the H150i Pro, which is another big brother over the H115i Pro. So that's a lot of big brothers here. But today we've got a 360 mil rad with three magnetic levitating fans. So these things are extremely quiet and I'll let you guys take a listen at 100% max load. So that noise test wouldn't mean a whole lot if we didn't have something to compare it to. So let's put up the H110i with its fans on 100% max speed. So from those noise tests, you can see that those ML fans are making a huge difference for noise and you don't lose a whole lot in temperatures. Yes, the previous fans will blow a little bit more air, but they run so with being a lot more noisier. So I'll let you guys take a look at the results here. And when we have the 360 mil rad, Corsair asked me specifically with this cooler to test it on some real big heat. So I decided to put the 7900X at 4.5 gigahertz under this cooler and it handled it absolutely fine. We got up to 91 degrees and keep in mind, this is in a 30 degree ambient environment. And then I put the H115i Pro on and that scored around about 94 degrees. So it was three degrees hotter than the 360 mil H150i Pro. And the H110 with its fans scored in at 91 degrees as well. But when I changed over to the magnetic levitating fans, that scored in at 94 degrees as well. So there isn't really a whole lot of a difference between the H115 and the H110. Not much of a difference besides the obvious RGB. And if you've looked at the B-roll already, yes, both these coolers, the H115 and the H150, carry an RGB on the base plate itself. Now you can control this via Corsair's Link software and this will bring up temperatures and you connect a little USB port into the cooler and then attach it to a USB 2 out on your motherboard and this enables you to control things like the different colors. Now you're probably on two sides of the fence. You really like RGB, you can set the color and color coordinate that to your build or you don't like RGB, you think it's gimmicky but if you're one of those people who thinks it's gimmicky, this one has a really cool feature with relations to temperatures. It's got three different levels there. You can set the degrees in manually. And also with that, you can put a max level. So for instance, if I don't like my cooler you know, getting over 95 degrees on the CPU, I can set that to purple. So if I see my uh, cooler light up purple, then I know something's in trouble. I should stop doing whatever I'm doing and maybe think about turning my computer or the settings down and tuning that cooler as well. So that was the coolest thing and no pun intended on that one with both these brand new coolers. The RGB is also functional as well as being good on the aesthetics. And also with that, the Corsair Link software, you can link that up to your keyboard, mouse, case, and everything in tandem and have really cool lighting effects. This is just another link in the chain if you need it. Though as we saw with those other two coolers, the Deep Cool and also the Gigabyte, the air cooler that I decided to throw on the mix here, they both failed on the X299 setup. The uh, 7900X was just too overwhelming. The Deep Cool almost passed got about 15 minutes into the test, but the Gigabyte cooler almost failed instantly. And keep in mind, I was testing all these temperatures at 100% fan speeds across all different models. To give you guys an apples to apples comparison so you know the max potential of these coolers. Now onto installation with both these coolers, it is just a breeze. It's so easy, it's so straightforward. The instruction manual is laid out really well. You can also download the instruction manual if you need to. It fits practically all sockets that are relevant, even LGA 1366. This thing will fit. You've got AM4 support as well for brand new AMD motherboards. And the TR4, if you need a bracket for that, because it is a specialized bracket, you can message Corsair and get that bracket sent out with this cooler. Now talking a little bit more about both these models, they both have braided cables and they are quite sturdy and also at the base of the cooler itself you get an aluminium base plate and Corsair tell me that they have improved the pump to be more efficient in that it makes less a noise than the previous H100 and the H110 and in practice I really couldn't notice a difference. I thought the H100 and the H110 were already really quiet. So overall both these coolers are really impressive especially for all-in-one units that you just get out of the box, install them with ease 
and they'll give you really good temperatures coming close to even that of custom water coolers and beating air coolers by quite a bit, especially with those higher thermal package CPUs like the 7900X that we tested here today. This thing will keep it under control at 4.5 gigahertz, which is a pretty good overclock for the 10 core 7900X. Though with that said, the H115i Pro it comes in at 140 retail in USD. The 360 mil version, the H150i Pro, that's coming in at 170 US dollars. So in that, and if you are in Australia, the good news is the pricing is a little bit better than it was in some of the previous generations with Corsair's products. So 199 USD for the H115i Pro and 239 AUD for the H150i Pro. So what you're getting for the money is actually pretty good considering you're getting those magnetic levitating fans. They do a great job of remaining quiet and pushing a lot of air through. Although they did lose a few degrees in performance, especially compared to those 140 mil fans on the H110, they did come in with a lot lower noise. The 140 mil fans on the H115i Pro did an extremely good job. They only ran three degrees in terms of lower in the overall package. And keep in mind, this is on a 7900X. If you were to put this on an 8700K, the difference would be even less. So the magnetic levitating fans, I'm a big fan of them, <laughs> all pun intended. And the H150i Pro, the 360 mil version, that thing is a beast. Of course, the 120 mil versions of the fans, they do run a slight bit louder. And also with that, they do push a little bit less air, but you do get three of them and you do get a bigger radiator with the H150i Pro and hence that allowed it just to edge out the H115. And also one more thing that I haven't mentioned yet with the H115i Pro, just like the H110, is that it is actually a 280 mil rad, not a 240. And with that, it's 140 mil thick. So sometimes it can't fit in cases where the 240 mil rad will actually fit, especially up the top of the case. This won't fit, it'll actually have some problems as witnessed when I've done builds in the past with the 570X, for example, and even quite recently with the Fractal Define R6. So it does need a special case if you want to mount it to the top, but a lot of times it will mount to the front of the case with ease. It's just, you'll have to rework the fan configuration. But with that said, two great coolers coming with some pretty aggressive pricing, especially for what you're getting with the maglev fans. Anyway guys, that's about it for today. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below what you think of the RGB and the magnetic levitating fans. Is this a cooler that you could use in one of your builds? I'll probably be using one of these in the near future in a build, especially that 360 mil rad and those 3 ml fans. They're really whisper quiet. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.